Okay, it is 10 o'clock. I think we will get started. Come in here. I am going to screen. Yeah. It seems gone. Hey, and you can, you will be able to see the agenda here for the meeting. This is our agenda. Uh, just like to start our, the role of this committee. The role is uh, of the BYU Physical Facility Safety Committee it functions as a forum for employees and management to work together to solve health and safety problems. Its roles are to help prevent injury and illness on the job, increase awareness of health and safety issues among workers, supervisors and managers, and to develop strategies to make work environments safe and healthy. There is a, a member from almost every shop in our division. And uh, it looks like more than half of us are zoomed in right now. This session is being recorded. I will send out the link to the recording to you with the minutes. And so anyone who for some, some reason isn't able to zoom in will be able to see the session. It uh, will be held the second Tuesday of every month uh, beginning today and for the foreseeable future, these will be Zoom meetings. I apologize that we can't meet in person and as soon as we can meet in person, it'll be much more effective to, to get together in person. We will start this with um, Charles from the paint shop give an opening prayer and then we'll turn the time over to Oli for a message from top management. So Charles, do you want to go ahead with that? Yes, thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to be together as, as employees of the physical facilities, and we pray thy spirit will continue to be with us during this, um, this time that we've had some challenges with, with uh, the virus and other things that have, have hindered us from getting together uh, as employees, and we pray especially thy blessing upon those that are affected recently with these um, neighboring fires um, in our communities and we pray that thy spirit will be with them and protect them and their families and properties and we pray that this meeting will be productive and grateful for brother Boquig and his persistence in getting us all together and to to remind us of of uh, our responsibilities to be wise and and um, and safe uh, uh, stewards we do love thee, Father in heaven. We pray for these things. In the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll turn the time over to Oli. Well, thanks, uh, everybody, for uh, joining this safety meeting. Um, this is something that uh, really is important for, for BYU and for physical facilities and for each of our shops. It, safety is one of those things that I think everybody wants, but I, guess, I, I suppose the question is, although we want to have a good safety record and we don't want anybody to get hurt, are we really taking the steps that will take us down that road, experiences. Working, uh, managing the temple construction for a third of the world. Um, I have temples being built all over United States, Canada, and as in uh, other countries. Periodically, rarely, thank heavens, but, but periodically, someone get hurt on a job. Never lost anybody as far as a death, but uh, we had some, some pretty good accidents. And one of the comments that almost always came up was, we expect this. It just happened. Um, 
And what that told me was that as, as people work, inadvertently do something that they, that they didn't expect caused the accident or the injury or whatever. Um, let me illustrate that with a personal example. Many of you know that uh, I'm a general contractor. BYU uses my license for many of the jobs that we do. Um, I've been a general contractor for 42 years. About eight years ago, I was helping my son on a job uh, as he remodeled a cabin preparing, uh, he, which he was going to sell um, and use the proceeds to help pay for his mission. Um, Denny knows Liam, I think. And uh, Liam and I, uh, Liam worked all day, every day on this, and I would swing by every other day and, and work with him and, and uh, help him accomplish things, answer his questions. Um, one day um, in late August, we were working and uh, we needed to finish up in a hurry and, and get going for some other family something, I forget. And we needed a shim and there was nothing around to use. And so I grabbed a little two by four and I was gonna rip it down the side of it. I mean, it was a little one, it was like eight inches long. And I was gonna rip it so that it was a three quarter inch shim. And uh, the table saw wasn't out and we were in a hurry and I still ask myself, what on earth were you thinking? But I held the thing in my hand and sliced down the, the edge on one side, no problem. I knew the blade, you know, it only goes about two and a quarter inches deep and this is a three and a half inch thing. And so I, I flipped it over and I was gonna cut the other half. Well, because I was in a hurry, I just didn't think that, you know, at, at a certain point it was gonna give because it was already halfway cut and it was gonna bind. And sure enough, that's what it did. and it sucked my hand, took off half of my thumb, um, down the, the length, lengthwise down my thumb. And uh, uh, it was pretty gruesome. And it was just unexpected. It was not thinking. It was 35 years of working as a general contractor and building things and working with my hands and, and, and all of that and never having had an accident, never having really hurt myself, and yet in one moment of not thinking, one moment of being in a hurry, one moment in, in just not working through the issue and saying, uh, that's really stupid. And I ended up really damaging my hand. Fortunately, plastic surgeons and modern technology were able to put it back together and, and I pretty much have use of my hand. Uh, the thumb doesn't work the way it used to, but uh, it works. I tell you that because I, I'm a careful person and yet I did something really dumb and it hurt me pretty good, pretty bad. And that, that is what I need and what I wanted to communicate to everybody this morning. We don't have accidents generally because people are just, you know, being careless by nature or whatever. I think as a general rule, we're a, we're a careful lot. We work hard to be safe. It's, it's in those moments where we're in a hurry where we're not thinking, where we're just on cruise control, that we end up 
at one point, maybe it's not today, maybe it's not tomorrow, but at some point in those 35 years or 42 years, we do something and, and, it, and it doesn't turn out the way we thought. So my message is simply, we, we need to keep a good safety record and we just need to help people understand just to always be vigilant, to be thinking, to, to not be in a hurry to get something done in, in the sense of doing something out of protocol. If I would have taken an extra two minutes to open up my table saw again, um, this whole thing would have never happened. And that's, that's, the, that's the point I wanna make. Let's just take things the way, do things the way that we should do them. Um, don't, sh don't take shortcuts. Um, follow the system that's been set up and the protocols that have been set up and we'll be safe and we won't, we won't uh, have problems. Uh, we've had a few accidents on the BYU campus that I wish wouldn't have happened. Um, I remember a few years ago, a kid in, in grounds put uh, one of the big aerators uh, that we use for the lawns to aerate put it in reverse, but he forgot to move his foot backwards too. And he aerated his foot. Um, it's, just, it's just those little things like that, that that we've got to watch out for. So my message simply um, with my own personal example is just be careful. Tell people to be wise, to be thoughtful, follow the protocol. And uh, I think we'll avoid almost all the accidents that, that are out there. So thanks for inviting me to share a, a little message with you. Uh, if you're ever with me and haven't seen my, as my kids call it, my magic thumb, uh, I can show you the magic thumb and the skin grafts that all went along with it. So thanks, thank you, Oli. Thank appreciate, you so uh, appreciate what you do. Okay, thank you. We will now turn the time over to David Smith. Now, David Smith is a director of environmental safety for the university. He works for risk management and he has a little presentation for us. David, you would like me to share my, let you share the screen, right? So- Yeah, I think the best way to do it, just make me a co-host and that will, that will give me freedom to share. All right. So while Dave's messing with that, um, I just want a second. I really appreciate Oli's message right there. You know, one of the best things we can do is just just thinking about the job and uh, performing. I used to do construction, and we used to call it pre-task planning. And if you guys ever heard that phrase before, and just before you get in a job with a group, you just say, hey, what are the hazards? What's, what's, what could hurt us today? And just doing that simple little five minute conversation uh, drastically can um, protect a lot of people who would accidentally make a mistake. And uh, I, I like only have made mistakes myself getting hurt working. So I totally- Okay, you should it. be able to share now. Okay, thanks, Dave. You're awesome. Um, hey, so I wanted to share with you something interesting that actually I was, we were sharing with the uh, president of the uh, university recently. And um, so uh, can you guys see my screen, see that PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. So let me full screen this really quick for you. Can you see it full screen? Is that better? Yes. I so. Okay. So here right here, just so you guys know about our performance at BYU, we actually aren't, we aren't too bad. Like, so we actually have a pretty good rare average, a little bit better than average on um, our industry injury rate. So OSHA calls this the total incident recordable, uh, total recordable incident rate, sorry, T-R-I-R. And um, BYU's average is about 1.8. The national average for colleges is 1.9. So we're a little bit better, 
the lower the number, the better. So we're a little bit better than the national average, which is good. Um, just so you guys can see that. I'm gonna chat with you guys a little bit about some citations we've had over the last couple of years because they could drastically uh, affect you guys in lots of ways and thought you'd wanna hear about them. Um, there's four types of, of uh, violations. One's called willful, one's called hey, serious. Dave, no, one's called Dave, can yeah. you enable your video so we can see what you look like? Oh man, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I, I had a text request from one of the participants. Oh man, you guys know I'm ugly. You know, why do you want that? Okay. Okay, can you see me? Oh, there you go. Oh, that's oh, that's great. With a t-shirt. Okay. So let me send you guys this. Share again. Okay, can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So there's four types of injuries. The other one's called other than serious, which means it's not really serious in nature and you can't really get a citation from it. Repeat are the ones I wanna to talk to you guys about because we've had uh, five violations, six actually I wanna show you here shortly. So just so you guys know, this is what it looks like when you get citation fees. So can you see that screen, the costs? Yes. Um, most of our injury costs now, before I even talk about this, I want to share with you. Injuries, the most important thing about any injury is nothing to do with money. I mean, money's an important part of it, and this is just fees you get when these things happen, but the person getting hurt is the most important part, right? And you guys believe that. So the goal is nobody gets hurt, but just so you guys can see the violation, the fees, what happens with it with the citation, I thought you'd want to know this because there's six citations on campus right now that are uh, were serious, or five of them were serious. One of them was other than serious. And if they become a repeat, they can go up to $70,000, which will affect your guys' budgets. So I thought you'd want to just know that um, firsthand. We shouldn't see, in my opinion, any at BYU that are willful. Willful are the big ones. They're the ones that are, you know, quarter of a million dollars and or half a million dollars and jail time. That means we purposefully put somebody at risk and said, just, you know, just be quiet, do the job and they got hurt. We should never have any of those. So please motivate your groups never to pursue that kind of thing. I don't think we will ever have that problem. I hope, can't imagine us having that issue. There's a three rule, it's called a three year rule. So when you get a citation, you hold that for three years, each citation. It's like a driver's record. Uh, you, those injuries or the accidents you had on your driver's record hold on your record for some time. So BYU holds them for three years. Here's the citations we currently have. One is, five of them are serious. One is serious, other than serious, means we didn't get a citation fee. I'm going to get cited for it. Sorry guys, I'm really jumping around. It was fall protection. This is one was um, somebody took a picture of somebody that was um, working, uh, cutting trees on a rooftop. It created two citations um, that deal with fall protection. So one is the employer didn't provide the employees the safety harness as required, or they didn't use it. And management didn't um, correct unsafe actions that they saw. Uh, and that's what they cited us for. The next one was one you guys probably didn't hear about because it was in dining. We had somebody get their fingertip chopped off by a machine. They bypassed a machine guard and this melon slicer um, underneath the carriage chopped the top part of the finger off. And um, so they bypassed the safety guard. So that's one. And then lastly, we had this pretty, pretty, uh, this is a pretty rough incident, in my opinion. This is a pretty, pretty good one. Um, we had an employee who was working on stamping Book of Mormon's, the covers, you know, the gold lettering, and put her hand in the machine at the same time because it was malfunctioning. Her supervisor, supervisor pulled the airline out, plugged it back in. She had her hand in there, and it smashed her fingers, broke her fingers on her one hand, and then it burned both sides of her skin off of her hand. So she had to go to the burn unit of the It was a pretty bad in injury. She barely started coming back to work about two weeks ago. 
So this interview is back in, um, I think May, maybe March. I'm trying to remember. I think I have it labeled it May 26. So that we got three citations there. Uh, we didn't have employee training done. We didn't have lockout procedures in place or any lockout equipment available. And, uh, um, uh, and we also, uh, the supervisor didn't uh, follow procedures to make sure employees were out of the way while they're working on a machine. So we hold these citations for three years. Here's the end dates on all these citations right here on the right and the highlighted in red, as you guys can see. Um, this, the, the scary part about this is um, with the fee part of it, the cost part of it, is that these, these fees don't just affect, these citations don't just affect those groups that had the incidents. It affects all of campus because we're all under the same EIN number. So if we have another injury in any of these categories, it becomes a repeat. And um, so it could drastically um, affect your guys' groups. But most important, like I said earlier, is it's not all about the money. It's about making sure we don't have these incidents again um, and get people hurt. Anyways, I thought you guys would want to know that. I could share those with you. I also have a document I'm going to send to Dave that kind of summarizes all these so you guys can see it. I think it's good to share it with your groups and just let them know that we do have some citations out there and uh, they're still active. And, um, and uh, but most importantly, the lessons learned, they can learn from the injuries that you guys can look at and go, well, do I have all my lockout tag up procedures in place? You know, reach out to Dave Butwick. He can help with that stuff as well and uh, help you guys get, you know, everything in order so you don't have any issues and people are staying safe you know, following the protocols. Anyways. I thought that would help. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to share. That's awesome. my time. Thank you, David. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, I will take the screen back now and let me see here. I'll stop sharing. Sorry, Dave. There you go. Not a problem. Thank you. Uh, David will stay with our, let's see, with our meeting here. Okay, screen. All right, you can see my screen now, I hope. It shows the agenda. Uh, what we want to do now is want to just give a quick and simple overview of how we track safety training throughout our shops. We have <clears throat> met with each of the shop supervisors and each one has identified a group of Y train safety modules that they want all of their employees to take. And this applies to both full and part-time employees. Right now on the screen, you see the spreadsheet for, this just happens to be the, the lock shop, the access services. It lists all of their employees on the left-hand side. And then across the top here, you see these are the different Y train modules, and they're all safety training modules that Lamar has asked that we, we track for his employees. You can see they've done a pretty good job. Almost 100% of their employees have completed uh, all of the trainings and some of them, if you see up here, there are some of them that have read after the title of the training that shows how often it needs to be repeated. So there are about a half a dozen of these that Lamar has identified that need to be repeated annually or every three years or, or so. And if the date is in red, that means that that has expired for that employee. Now this report is sent out nine times a year to each supervisor. The first three months of every semester. The last month of the semester we kind of skip just because we're in transition in the shops and students are coming and leaving and, and so we don't send out a report three times a year. But the first month of the semester and the third month of the semester, not only do we send this report out, but we send out individual reports to each employee to their email. And so they they're, they know where they stand, what has what needs to be renewed, and so forth. I'm sure all of you are aware of this. You've all received these emails, and uh, that's uh, how we track those. Also, because you are the safety officers for your shops, I have begun sending this monthly report out, the one that I sent to the supervisor, 
I've been sending it to you, copying it to you as well. So you're aware of the safety status, the safety training status for your individual shops. And you can see that there is a tab at the bottom of this spreadsheet for every shop. Of course, the report that I send out is just your shop. It, I don't send out the report for every shop to, to you. So that is how we track safety trainings in physical facilities. The next item that I wanted to discuss is that um, there is, this is item four, why train is converting to a, to a new learning management system called Absorb. We will still call our trainings why train, but it's using a different system. And this is a big effort. We have about 175 trainings that physical facilities has uh, created uh, and we have to format these all in such a way that they can be uploaded into this new LMS. That will take place within the next few months and I'll keep you posted in these monthly meetings as, as to where we stand. I have actually uh, put up on the screen here, uh, right here, this is what the new Absorb LMS looks like, the opening screen for it. So you can see it's, it's pretty similar to what we are used to in Y-Train. There's a catalog and uh, you can uh, monitor your own courses and uh, there are some additional uh, benefits to being on Absorb as well. It will incorporate a bunch of other external trainings that uh, are available through companies like uh, LinkedIn Learning and others that will, will track those type of trainings. So it's, it's pretty, pretty slick. So that's what's coming up with Absorb over the next few months. Number five on the agenda, I wanted to mention that uh, BYU has subscribed to an online uh, system called MSDS Online. It's a system for tracking and managing safety data sheets for hazard communication. As you're aware, OSHA requires that all employees have safety data sheets for, for the chemicals that they use available to all of their employees. And in the past, those have had to be hard copies that you keep in some sort of a file in your workplace. This should not be news to anybody. There should be a file in every shop with, uh, with those either in loose leaves or in a file box or something. But what BYU has done, actually what the church has done is they have subscribed to an online SDS uh, system. So you don't have to keep the hard copy anymore, but you can just get on your computer at your website and go to this online site and bring up all of the SDSs. I want to take you on a quick little tour of what that looks like. So this is, oh, let's see here. This is what MSDS Online looks like when you log in. You can see this is for the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the subscriber, but it has all, it's a repository for all MSDSs that the church uses, and it even has all MSDSs that other businesses uses throughout the country. It is very, very extensive. You can see here that at the top is a, it says paint shop because you can sort this by area. If you click on this little button here, you can filter by different location. And as, as I go through this location tree, you can see that BYU Hawaii, it has their, M, their SDS is on here. And as I scroll down, you'll see that also uh, we have BYU uh, Provo, I believe here, uh, BYU Hawaii. And as you can see here, as we go down, BYU Idaho, BYU Provo is there. And then under beneath BYU Provo, it is divided by buildings in the academic area. And then there is a physical facilities as well. And under physical facilities, we have the various shops. Now, not all shops are in there yet. 
and we want to put all shops in there, we will start by doing, we will go to the paint shop. I know the paint shop is pretty current. Uh, Charles has been working on getting their, their repository all up to date there and we'll, so we'll click on paint shop and push apply and then you'll see that it is showing that the paint shop is, it, 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 we're showing all of the products in the paint shop. There are nearly 600 products that we have MSDSs on, on that the paint shop uses. You can do a search, click right there in the search bar and type in what the name or whatever chemical you want and it will then bring up the results. It will come down in this list. But when it comes up, you just click, click on it and it will bring up all the data for that for that shop. You can see here that by clicking on this link, you can go to the PDF of the, of the chemical. It's right there and you can scroll down and, and uh, see the entire chemical uh, information. Or you can click on label and you can print out labels for that chemical. Or you can click on share and it will open up an email and you can email that SDS information wherever you want to the doctor or wherever you need to send that email. So this is very, very helpful, very slick. What we would like to do within the next uh, month or two is I'd like to meet with each of you in your shop and uh, come up with a strategy to make sure that we have this uh, website that is bookmarked on all of your shop computers. Uh, there is a uh, a quick little link. I will send it out with the minutes, the link for the, for the website so that you can uh, put it there in your shop. And that way, everybody has the information that they need and you don't have to worry about those, these paper SDSs anymore. And this will fulfill the OSHA requirement for SDSs. It's very, very, very slick. The, uh, there's also an app for a smartphone that you can use a smartphone to get into this website on the fly and bring up these SDSs. However, the smartphone app does not fulfill the OSHA requirement for the SDSs to be in all the workspaces. Maybe because smartphones do not have the same connectivity, they're not as reliable with their connectivity as uh, a desktop computer in a shop, for example. So, there is also, with a smartphone, you can download the app that takes you in, or you can just use a QR reader and you can post a, a QR next to your, somewhere in your shop and they can just read that QR on, with their smartphone and it will bring up the website. So there are a couple of ways to use a smartphone for that. It's, a, it's very important that we get this implemented in all of the shops. And so I'll be coming around, I'll, meet, I'll, I'll contact you each individually and we'll set up a timeline and come around and we can kind of make sure that your shop is set up. Are there any questions about that? If you have a question, you're on mute, you'll need to unmute yourself in order to ask your question. Okay, very good. We uh, only have about five more minutes uh, tops for this meeting. So we want to, uh, Next, talk about item number six here. There is a very good safety video online. It's called Taking Safety from the Office to the Job Site. It's 90 minutes long. And I want to encourage each of you as a safety officer or safety committee member for your shop to get in and view this sometime over before our next meeting. There's the website. It requires a username and a password. That's also right there. But what you wanna do is just copy that website and I'll show you what, if you just highlight it and then right click and copy it and then go to your browser and put it in the browser address uh, field, paste it in there and then just enter and it will take you to this login screen for this website called Compost 2020. This uh, is something that uh, grounds, uh, our representative from grounds, Andy uh, got me onto and, and, and gave me the password for, and he said that it would be okay for all of our members to see this. But if once you log in, it will take you to this uh, page right here, 
And then under keywords, there's a link here for keywords. If you'll just scroll down and search under safety, it will bring up this, uh, this video. And I have to tell you, it's one of the best videos on safety I have ever seen. It is worth seeing. In fact, it's worth seeing multiple times. I really encourage everyone to, uh, to watch this. Uh, so if you have any questions, I'll send that out with the minutes as well. Now to end our meeting this morning, I want to mention that we will start keeping what we call a concerns log, safety concerns, uh, that any member of the committee can bring up and we will log these and we'll track how we're addressing these concerns and we will actually publish this to our management as well so that Oli and others can see what our concerns are and how we're trying to address these concerns. Now we could, you can bring up concern right now in the committee meeting, or you can email me the concern independent of the meeting, or, uh, or you can just come and see me in my office or whatever is most convenient and comfortable, comfortable for you works. Are there any concerns that anyone from the committee would like to bring up at this point that you'd like us to start uh, focusing on? Okay, sounds like nothing very pressing. So the next meeting will be on Tuesday, October 13th, 10 o'clock. Once again, we'll do another Zoom meeting. We will try and keep these fast paced and informational and worthwhile. Once again, I will send out the minutes of this meeting and I will attach as well to this email of the minutes, I'll attach the, uh, the video of this meeting as well, so that you can go back and review the, the meeting if you'd like. And uh, that pretty well closes our meeting for today. Thank you for participating and uh, let you get ready to see the BYU devotional, the first live devotional of the year with President and Sister Worthen. I will end the meeting now. Thank you so much for participating.